Aero McLaren had two brand new drivers in their lineup entering the 2020 season, the first being Pato Award. And ever since then, he has had great success with the team, winning a combined four races in three seasons and finishing top five in points in two of those three. He has shown championship potential at times. Unfortunately, for his teammate Oliver Askew, it was a much different story. Pretty complicated as a matter of fact. Which is stunning considering that entering the 2020 season, Oliver Askey was viewed as a potential IndyCar superstar. A driver who dominated the previous Indy Lights season, only to land a ride with one of the biggest brands in all of motorsport for his rookie season. It seemed like the sky was the limit, but instead, he would be out of the sport by 2022. The American Swedish driver was raised in Jupiter, Florida, and along with current IndyCar driver Kyle Kirkwood, the two grew up racing alongside one another. By 2016, he was starting to advance up the motorsports ladder, receiving a Team USA scholarship, which allowed a young American race car driver to compete outside of the United States. A year later, he won the USF 2000 championship and earned another scholarship, this time from Mazda, to race in the 2018 Pro Mazda Series. He finished third in the 2018 Pro Mazda Championship, not long after he was asked to test for Andretti Autosport. It was confirmed in February of 2019 that he would drive for them in the Indy Lights Series. Up to this point, he had showcased his talents in every other category and he was expected to do the same here and with this being just one step away from the indycar series a good season could lead to an indycar seat for 2020. in his only season in indy lights oliver askew put together one of the greatest seasons any rookie in the series has ever had seven wins seven poles 15 podiums an average finish of 2.6 and won the championship, edging out current IndyCar driver Renus VK by 21 points. Out of those seven wins, five came on road courses while two came on ovals. The biggest win of them all, of course, being the famous Freedom 100. Since IndyCar was a series with mostly road and street courses with a few ovals spread out here and there, Oliver Askew was viewed as the perfect driver to promote from the Indy Lights series. The question was which team would take a chance. In July of 2019, Askew joined the Portland test with Chip Ganassi Racing, but in late October, it was announced that he would be driving for Aero McLaren alongside Pato Award full-time in 2020. The season got delayed because of COVID-19, which was going to make for a very unusual year and schedule. In his IndyCar debut at Texas, he ended up finishing ninth. After qualifying fifth for his following race in the Indy GP, it seemed like momentum was going in the the right way until all of a sudden it wasn't. Oh, well, that's Askew. Oliver Askew after qualifying in the Firestone Fast Six, trying to get consecutive top tens. He has had a huge crash. Turn 14 coming onto the screen. Okay, that's there we go. This is flat out corner. You can see it gets loose. Oh, Ooh. virtually the same accident that Marcus Erickson had last year. He started to get wheel spin. He had the correction. He thought he had it. He never really lifted. He kept his foot in it, trying to preserve lap time. It's a shame considering he was running inside the top five at the time of the accident. This seemed to set the tone for the next two races at Road America, where he finished 15th and 21st. And to make matters worse, entering the Iowa weekend, his teammate Pato Award was in a tie for third place in points while Askew was sitting just two points inside the top 20 in 19th place. It's important to note that Pato had raced in eight IndyCar races in the two seasons prior, so it's understandable that the team would expect him to perform a little bit better, but they didn't anticipate that Oliver Askew would be this far behind his teammate. He needed a stellar performance during the Iowa weekend, and in the first of two races, he went on to score what would be the only podium of his IndyCar career, a third place finish on the Iowa Oval, finishing just one spot ahead of Pato Award. In the next race, he would lead the first laps of his IndyCar career, a total of 10, and finish sixth place. This was obviously the best weekend of his IndyCar career. In the span of one weekend, he was able to jump from 19th 
to 12th in the point standings, showcasing the potential that many thought he had. With the momentum back in his favor, he was about to get ready for the biggest race of his life, the extremely unusual, very empty 2020 Indy 500. Starting in 21st, he was going to have to come through the field, but by lap 27, he was leading the Indy 500. He ended up leading a total of four laps and was competing up front. If everything went the right way, surely he could be a contender to win that season's Indy 500. Unfortunately, it wouldn't go that way. On lap 91, Oliver Askew would be involved in a massive crash that would not only change the trajectory of his season, but perhaps the trajectory of his IndyCar career. Oh! Pick up the a spin -off. Connor like Daly. Tim Connor Daly spins and oh, oh big hard hit, hit for I think Oliver Askew. Oliver Askew oh. lost it in the smoke, and that was a massive hit. That was nasty. Connor just yeah. loses it on the power. He's down way low. Lots of smoke. He's got the throttle wide open. And in the back here. I don't really know what, I don't know if he got touched, but bang, oh. side slap, pancake the wall. Thank goodness Super for hard. the safer barrier. Thank oh. goodness for the safer barrier. While the safer barrier absorbed a lot of the impact by design, it's still a pretty hard hit. So hard that Oliver Askew would end up having a concussion. This is very serious and shouldn't be taken lightly, but what ended up happening was Askew ended up driving in the next four races. The Gateway and Mid-Ohio weekends resulted in mediocre runs, all the momentum he built up at Iowa was now gone. After those four races, friends and family encouraged him to seek medical treatment. After doing so, he was withdrawn from the following Grand Prix. Less than a month later, it was announced that Arrow McLaren would be releasing Askew at the end of the season. It was a very confusing move by some. Even though he didn't perform up to the level of his teammate, some felt that he was going to get another season in the seat because he was a rookie. But in in this video by David Land, it's implied why McLaren weren't happy with him. You know on this channel there are fun videos to do and then there are not so fun videos to do. This is definitely falls into the not so fun uh, to do category, especially when we're talking about a young driver, Indy Lights champion, uh, who in my opinion has been screwed over by his team. The why is the thing that has everyone talking right now. Why has McLaren let go? their concussed uh, rookie driver who quite honestly did not get really much of a fair shake although no reason for the split was cited it's believed an interview featuring quotes from Askew's management team which questioned the team's commitment to Askew's well-being caused embarrassment for both AMSP and IndyCar did little to help the situation and I hope this does not become another case study of why athletes do not tell their teams they are injured said agent Jeff Dickerson the reason that they do that is because more often times than not they are replaced in motorsports there's always somebody to replace you whether it was Dale Jr. or Oliver Askew there is always another driver available. The combination of bad on-track performance as well as the concussion situation being a messy one for Aero McLaren gave them the excuses they needed to release him after just one season. A very unusual season, I might add. Which is what made his firing very unfair to some. Fans wanted to see what he could do in a normal season. But unfortunately, he would never get that chance. In 2021, he made five starts for three different teams, oddly one of them being Aero McLaren. Other races for Ed Carpenter and Ray Hall Lanigan Racing resulted in only a best finish of ninth place at Laguna Seca. His last chance to drive full-time was going to be with Ray Hall Lanigan, but instead they chose Christian Lungard for 2022, ending Askew's chances with the team. Even though he was out of the series by 2022, his motorsports career wasn't over. In IMSA, he ended up winning in a category of the Rolex 24 race at Daytona. He also ran a full season in Formula E during the 2021 season. As of this upload, he just turned 26, so he's still relatively young, so he has a very long successful motorsports career ahead of him. But when it comes to his IndyCar career specifically, when you get a ride with a team like Aero McLaren, 
you are expected to perform for wins and podiums. At times he would gain momentum only to have it stunted by a crash. And racing with concussion-like symptoms did not help the situation. And what puts the icing on the cake is what his former teammate Pato Award has done with the team since then. Oliver Askew, already before the age of 30, has a very impressive motorsports resume, but when it comes to his IndyCar career, he is for now, and again, for now, unfortunately labeled an IndyCar bust. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.